From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Lieutenant Howard, homicide. Oh, hi, Steve. Hi. As you know, I've given orders for you to be confined to your suite out there at the Maples until I can get some of the lab crew out there. You don't think I murdered Warren Staley? Apparently, you were the only one who was with him when he died. Now, look here. I'm the one who's kept even the family out of here. What's more important, you're the only one in the whole estate who might be trusted to keep things intact. Any possible evidence. So please, don't leave your room. Okay, diplomat, I'll sit tight. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account, or rather report, submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Philadelphia Mutual Liability and Casualty Company, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in connection with my investigation of the Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscoat matter. No need to itemize expenses at this point, because there are none. The magnificent suite in which I'm parked out at the sumptuous mansion of Mrs. Peter Malcolm Kelly Van Pyten is fine, except for the body of young Warren Staley, Mrs. Van Pyten's nephew, draped over the arm of the easy chair in which he died a few minutes ago. I'd call Lieutenant Howard at Homicide on the phone in my room immediately, and within minutes, the nearest patrol man was stationed outside my door, refusing admittance even to the lady of the house. After all, this was the third murder that tied up with the Scottish terrier who started all this, Laird Douglas Douglas of Heatherscoat. While waiting for Lieutenant Howard and his crew, I shaved, showered, and changed my clothes. Then, about ten minutes later... Well, Dollar. Yeah, Lieutenant. Uh see what you mean. Yeah. He seemed like a nice kid, too. He's all yours, Doctor. Go right ahead. Very well, Lieutenant. Here, Paul, just sit my kid over Okay, for pictures, over. Lieutenant. Yeah, yeah, go right ahead, Sergeant. Okay, excuse me, Doc. Hey, before you get started... Okay, Dollar, let's have it. What happened? Well, Warren brought me up here himself, and I sat him down to ask him some questions. You suspected him, didn't you, in spite of what I told you? Sure. As sole beneficiary of the Van Pyten estate, empire as he called it. Yeah, well, what do you think now? That you were right... That he was clean. Anyhow... My boy, my poor darling Warren, where is he? No, take your hands off me. My boy Just a minute, Mr. Van Pike. You... No, you can't keep me out. This well, is my own house, and this is my own yes, nephew, I, I'm my sorry, boy. but you'll have to wait until we can get oh, everything clear. Oh, this terrible, I'm terrible Mr. Van Pike, thing. You just wait until we finish Just this. a minute, Lieutenant. Hey, whoa, young fella. Hold on a minute. Who are you? Johnny Dollar, who are you? Ronald Kenworthy, his best friend. What happened to him? He was poisoned. Poisoned? And where were you? How could a thing like this happen if you were doing... Oh, Ronnie, just calm down a minute. How long have you been here in the house? Why, half, three quarters of an hour, something like that. But I don't see... Where? Where were you? I was down in the reading room with Mrs. Van Pyten. All the time? Len, out in the garden. Alone? Yes, except for a few minutes while I talked to Hastings, the butler out there. What were you doing in the garden? I was on my way up here by the back way to see Warren. I've always used the back staircase from the garden ever since we were kids together. This suite of rooms used to be our playroom, ever since I can remember. All right, all right. Go on with what you were saying. Well, then about that time, or a few minutes later, I don't know exactly, I heard the police car come screaming up the driveway. That was the first that any of us, Mrs. Van Pyten or Hastings or I, that any of us knew that something was wrong, that something had happened to Warren. But now look here, Mr. Dollar, right, I don't... with you two. What? You'll have to leave with Mrs. Van Pyten until we're through in here. Oh, please, Ronald, help me. Help well, me. but I... Go ahead, Ronnie, go ahead. Oh. All right. Oh, come on, you poor old... Ah, poor old dame. Sorry for her. You finding anything, Doc? Yes, I think so. I certainly think so. Be with you in a minute. All right. You better go on with what you were saying, Dollar. Well, not much more to say, Lieutenant. Warren felt the same way you do, that Branson at the insurance company does. If anything happened to the dog, Laird Douglas, it'd be the end of Mrs. Van Pyten. That the murders of the dog's handlers, caretakers, were purely incidental to attempts on the dog's life. But... But what? Well, he apparently was as concerned over this whole thing as we've been. Said he had a very strong theory about who might be back of all this. Who, oh, did he tell you? He was about to when this, whatever it was, hit him. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what it was, Lieutenant. Yeah, Doc? Oh, uh, this is Mr. Dollar. Oh, yeah, Doc. Dollar. The Norfolk acid. Same thing that killed the two dog handlers and was used on the dog itself. I can tell without further examination. Wait a minute, mind. Doc. Wait a minute. If the dog got the same thing that killed a couple of grown men... A dog with a much more sensitive stomach, unused to all the strong food and drinks the human stomach is constantly abused with, 
A dog would immediately regurgitate and retain only a minute amount of the panorphic acid. I see. In the case of Warren Staley here, it was added to the scotch whiskey he drank. Traces of it in his glass and in a full glass beside your chair. Well, Doc, have you checked those bottles in the cellar? I'm uh, just about to. Uh, uh, which uh, bottle did he pour that out of, Dollar? The one right next to that bottle of VO there. He... Wait a minute. This isn't the same bottle. What? Well, the one he poured from was half empty. This is nearly full. Hey, now, what's the matter with you boys? What's up? You let somebody switch bottles a minute ago? Oh, Mr. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nobody else came in here besides Mrs. Van Peyton and young Kenworthy? Hastings the butler, but he just stood in the doorway. Sure, that's right, Lieutenant. Yet somehow, between the time Warren Staley poured those drinks and now, somebody switched bottles. Unless you're wrong about this, Dollar. No sign of the poison in this one, Lieutenant. It's the only scotch bottle. You've been here in the room all this time, Dollar? Yeah, sure. And in the bath, I shaved and showered and dressed while waiting for you to get here. But only after one of your men came and parked outside the door. Well, where does this door lead to? Well, it's the dog's quarters, two rooms. Oh, I see. Come on, Dollar. You might wait for us. Yeah, right. What about that door beyond? Oh, that. Mademoiselle Poirot, the dog's governess. Well, where was she? How should I know? I didn't even meet her. I... Oh, oh, oh. Me! Me! Ah, the folies majeure. Yeah, I, I guess I should have knocked. Who are you? Why are you coming this way while I'm dressed myself? Uh, uh, sorry, Mademoiselle. We're the police. Police? What have I done that you should see me this way? Well, nothing, ma'am. Nothing. But, but how long have you been there in your room? Only two minutes. I came in the back way to change my clothes. Yeah, that was obvious. It's my day off. I have big date. Well, not now you haven't. Get dressed and I'll send an officer in to escort you downstairs. Come on, Dollar. No, you cannot do this to me. I've done nothing wrong. You cannot make me stay here. Say, Pete, yeah. send somebody around the back way to cover the governess and take her downstairs yeah. for questioning. Yes, sir. Hey, Ransom. Yo. And Johnny, looks like you goofed. Hmm? While you were showering, somebody came in through her room through the dog's quarters, and did the bottle switch on us. Oh, well, then we're even. Yeah, we're... What? You have very carefully mussed up any fingerprints that might have been on those doorknobs. Oh. Uh, Jerry, see if you can get any prints off those doorknobs back there. Right. If I haven't wrecked them. But, Johnny, if I didn't know about you and your reputation, I'd peg this on you so fast you'd... You haven't been holding out on me, have you? I assured him that I hadn't, then went downstairs to the monstrous living room and sat in while we went through a routine questioning of everyone in the household. I even went through the motions of bodyguarding the dog that had started all this and tried to console Mrs. Van Pyten. Results of the questioning? Nothing, Dollar, nothing. No leads. Yeah, so I noticed. The two previous murders of the dog's caretakers, or bodyguards, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, well, same poison was used then. In their food as well as the dog's. But why? Why, Steve? Why? Why they? To keep them from helping Laird Douglas when it hit him? Well, more likely because those handlers had got wind of the attempt to poison the dog and suspected who was trying to do it. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. So there's one thing you're overlooking, darling. What's that? The intended victim of this last poisoning was not Warren Staley. But you. Oh, brother, I'm not overlooking that for one second. Yeah, and that's why I asked you if you were holding out anything on me. Because it would indicate that you have a lead. Or at least suspicion about someone. Sure, sure, I got a lot of suspicions. Ronald Kenworthy, his old man, the butler, heaven help us. Even Mrs. Van Pyten. <laughs> Maybe even you, Steve. But when it comes to evidence... Uh... Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, I've got work to do. Looking for the proverbial needle in a haystack was nothing compared to hunting for the poison bottle of scotch that was no doubt stashed away somewhere. Far, far into the night, a regular army of policemen probed and dug and poked around. They opened drawers and closets and cabinets, pounded on walls, looking for sliding panels and secret compartments, went through the trash, sifted a trash heap, dug up any freshly turned earth they could find on the grounds even climb trees. Yeah, they prowled through attics and basements looked everywhere. Result? Nothing. Meanwhile, I stayed close to Mrs. Van Pyten. And I'll say this for her. In spite of her almost silly infatuation with that dog, she showed real strength of character. We sat alone together in the reading room. I know, Mr. Dollar, there's nothing I can do to bring Warren back. 
Therefore, there's no point in simply sitting here weeping over it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it isn't easy because it meant more. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, um, uh, I want to ask you some things, Mrs. Van Pyden. I suppose this is the wrong <coughs> time, but I... No, ask me, Mr. Dollar. I think I know what you want to ask, and now, now that this last terrible thing has happened, I hope, I, I pray that I can help you. Well, I had quite a talk with Warren before he died. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm glad. Warren would have been the sole heir to the Van Pyten estate. Yes, he alone would have carried the honor, the prestige of the family after my passing. Oh, no. Surely you didn't think that he could have been behind those other terrible murders. Quite frankly, at first I did. But he told me something else, and it's bothered me. About Mr. Kenworthy and his son. Ronald? Oh, no, Mr. Dollar. He was supposed to be Warren's best friend. You said supposed to be. Well, I... I Warren don't... made it very clear that if the Kenworthys could somehow acquire the Van Pyten holdings, either by Mr. Kenworthy marrying you... I have told Harrison R. Kenworthy... Yes, I know. If Laird Douglas wins the show from his Kerry Blue Terrier, you'll marry him. Yes. And I still think it's a screwy idea. But the fact remains, it's fairly true. It's quite true. Neither you nor Mr. Kenworthy has too many years ahead, if you'll forgive me. Mr. Dollar, what... So there's now only one person left to benefit by the death of Laird Douglas, of Warren, of you, and ultimately of Mr. Kenworthy. Good heavens, Mr. Dollar. That's right. Ronald Kenworthy. Well? I know. I know it. I think you've said enough, Mr. Dollar. Ronald. Yes, I heard it all. Mr. Dollar, I think you said too much for... Shall we say your health? Now, here's our star to tell you about the final intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, all cards are laid on the table. And believe me, the deck proves to have been stacked right from the beginning. Tomorrow, the wind-up... Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.